Well, it's set time. It's time to start another model. Don't go away. I don't know if you can tell or not, but I'm really excited to get this model started. Um, I showed you this uh, a little bit ago in a, a sneak peek, if it, you know, if you want to call it that, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's the Hunchback of Notre Dame kit by Polar Lights. It's the remake of the Aurora kit. I'm going to build this. It's going to have a resin head so it'll look better. Uh, I'm going to do some fun things to it. And it's really just going to be a fun build for me because these are the kits I loved when I was young. Okay, this th these are the ones I really remember the best that I loved building these things. And so I'm fully anticipating being excited about building this. I'm going to put a lot of effort into it and try and make it as cool looking as I can. And we'll see what we get. So let's get to work. So I can't really tell you how excited I am to be building the Hunchback of Notre Dame model. Okay, I, when when I was a boy, uh, I loved building all models, but there was something special about the creature models. Um, you know, they're, they're simple builds. There's nothing to them as a build. It's all about the painting. And back in the day, I just I loved painting these the the. The Frankenstein and the Dracula and the Hunchback. I love this kit. So I'm really, really excited here. Anyhow, uh, we've got it out. And of course, as always, thorough review of the instruction sheet. Make sure I have a, a firm grasp on how this model is going to go together. And that's also where I'm doing the preliminary planning for um, how I'm going to paint this. Okay? So, like, for example... Um, I will not glue his torso to his uh, legs and stuff until I'm done painting so I don't have to worry about that division between the two. So uh, that's all the kind of stuff I'm looking for is how am I going to paint things? His hands. His hands won't get glued on until pretty much everything is painted. Um, you know, and this is just a way to make sure I, I can do it the best way possible without a bunch of struggles. So always, always, always thoroughly review your instruction sheet on any model you're going to build. Super cool thing about this kit is that it comes with two complete hunchbacks. One molded in like a flesh color and another molded in glow-in-the-dark material. Now the only thing that it doesn't have two of is the pedestal that he uh, is sitting on. But I have a plan for that where I'm not going to use the kit-provided pedestal. So I'm going to use the flesh-colored parts to build my hunchback. I'm going to still have left over an entire hunchback and glow-in-the-dark, and I'm going to have the pedestal left over. So it's going to be like I'm going to be able to get two hunchbacks out of one kit, which is pretty fabulous. So I'm excited about that. Anyhow, I'm using my fabulous Tamiya side cutters to nip away all the parts. Look, you know, for the longest time, I was the kind of guy who was just breaking the parts off. I'm telling you, it's going to save you so much work in filling little errors where the the sprue broke off a piece of the casting and stuff. Just, you know, take the time and do it right, okay? Cut the parts away and then trim everything up with a sharp X-Acto knife. Test fitting. What can I say about test fitting other than it's vital, okay? Uh, that This way you have an understanding of how it's going to go together, where the glue is going to need to be uh, applied, and what glue you're going to use. And in the case of some of the older castings, or like uh, the AMT fire trucks that I like to build, uh, those kits are so bad that... Um, 
parts don't fit good, and so you kind of have to have a plan. This snapped together really, really nicely. All I got to do is apply a little bit of pressure. I'll touch the seam with some Tamiya uh, thin cement, let it flow through the joint, hold it for just a few minutes and let it dry, and I'm good to go. Now, later in this build, I will be using some CA, but uh, for the most part, the entire build is done with uh, the Tamiya thin cement. And one of the reasons, besides that capillary action that allows it to flow through the joint, is it does a really great job of melting the parts on both sides of the seam. And as they're drying, they're kind of swooshing together and becoming one, and it's, it's actually filling the seam with melted plastic. It makes it so much easier to finish it later. Uh, I'm going to use very, very little filler in this model because the Tamiya Thin Cement is going to do the job for me. Now look, these are old models, okay? Even even though it's a remake, and I, what I'm saying is the original design and the artwork and the molds and everything, it's all from old models. The detail is, well, it's lacking at, at best. So know that going in if you're going to do one of these creature models. And honestly, what you're looking for is you're looking for something that's going to be enjoyable, it's going to be a fun build, and it's going to be a build that takes you back. And, and that's what you should be expecting in a build like this. Yeah, so with just a little bit of pressure applied between the uh, joints and that Tamiya thin cement, it really just fills the gap. And all I need to do is, once it's dry, I take a little sanding stick and go through and and sand at the joint, and it practically disappears. There may be a little bit here and there that I need to fill, but for the most part, it's just going to go away. Now, on one of my favorite online model shops, Cult TV Man, um, you can buy these resin heads for some of the monsters. And so I bought the resin head for the Hunchback. And let me tell you, it's night and day difference between the original casting. Now, it, when, I, when I build the glow-in-the-dark one, I'm going to use the glow-in-the-dark head um, because there's some nostalgia there in, in how bad it is. But this resin head is really going to make a difference in the way this final model comes out. Um, I'm going to do some serious test fitting here. A little bit of tweaking to make sure everything works right. And this is one of the places where I'm going to use some cyanoacrylate to glue the head to the body because of the differing materials. So you know how I love my gel control CA, and that's what I'm using to glue the parts together. Um, it's just such a strong bond. It really is. It's one of the strongest CA bonds I, I know about. And so whenever I can, I'll turn to this. It's not going to flow around well because it is a gel glue, but uh, man, is it strong. So if you're going to follow along like I'm doing and, and use a head that wasn't a part of this kit, 
it's just not going to be a perfect fit, okay? You're going to have to do some filling and, and make it blend in. And for that, I'm going to use this thick CA from Starbond. And I'm going to kind of squeeze it in around the neck into the little nooks and crannies that are still there. And I'm going to use that to not only strengthen the bond between the head and the torso, but also to fill the gaps. So once the CA is dry, I can go ahead and do some sanding. Then I'm going to hit it up with Tamiya Fine Primer, and that's going to help me find any other flaws that I need to sand out. And once I'm happy with the way it looks, I can start thinking about heading to the paint booth again to put down a base flesh color. Now, there's going to be a lot to talk about here. Um, first off, we're going to talk about painting eyes. Why am I talking about painting eyes while I'm putting down the base flesh color? Because to me, to get a good eye, the first thing you're going to do is put down that base flesh color, then you're going to paint in the eyes, then you're going to build up the flesh tones after the eye is painted in. That way you can trim it out if you need to. All right? So... We want to get the base flesh color down, then we'll turn to painting in the eyes, and then we can go ahead and clean things up later. Now, the other thing I want to talk about here is, yeah, I'm putting down a base flesh color, but you have to understand, I'm going to get controversial here. I see these figure painters, and they're great. Okay, they really are. They're fantastic, far better than I am. So maybe they know more about it than I do, but they put on layer after layer after layer. I've seen some people paint the first layer uh, like a, a deep red and then build up from there. I don't get it. I just don't get it. I, uh, I think you can get really beautiful results by putting down a base flesh layer and then highlighting it using oils and uh, pigments and I don't know that you really need to put on 30 layers of flesh color to get it to look right. Um, I, I just don't know that. So uh, I, maybe they know something that I don't know. But well, you tell me at the end of this, tell me how his skin tones look. And uh, I used infinitely less uh, layers than most figure painters do. So, at the end of this video, put down in the comments what you think. How did it come out? You know? I don't know. I, I think maybe uh, we're getting too big for our own britches and, and we're doing a bunch of stuff that we don't really need to be doing. Alright, so like I said, after the base flesh layer is down, we're going to turn to eyeballs. And eyeballs... They're not white, okay? If you paint a pure white eyeball on your figure, it's going to stand out like, like a pea stream in a field of snow, okay? You don't want that. You're going to need to add in a little tan or brown or yellow to dingy up that white. Now, see here, I, I've got it too brown, okay? That's too much, all right? But I'll, I'll fix that up. And once I've got the, the white where I want it, then I'll go ahead and paint in his eyeballs. And then we'll move on from there. Okay, so I've got the tone where I want it, and I'm going to go ahead and start painting eyeballs. And uh, for each eyeball, I'm going to go in half and half. So I'm going to start 
pointing this direction. I'm going to do half of his eyeball. Now I flip the model over so I can go the other direction to finish off the eyeball. Now I'm still trying to be careful. But because I used one single color for his base flesh tone, if I get outside of the eyelid, it's going to be easy for me to touch that up. If I had already started laying in all these different colors and whatnot, it might be really difficult for me to try to touch up around the eye with the matching color. Now, um, because this is the Hunchback and he's got that one weird eye, uh, I thought it would be fun to kind of make it a little bit gross. So you see, I'm going to add a little bit of this green to the base eye color that I'm going to use to kind of make that eye look a little, well, gross, pus-filled. I, I don't know. I just thought it should look hideous. So that's what we're going to do. So again, using this new color for the big bulbous eye, I'm going to come in from one direction and paint to the middle of the eye. And then when I'm done, I'll flip the character around and I'm going to come in from the other direction and paint to the middle of the eye. And you can see here on the, the bulbous eye, I, I got a little bit too much out there. It's going to need some touch-up, but it's not a problem because I know the exact color I sprayed on him. And I can just put a little bit on the brush and just trim out the eye and it's going to be perfect. So... I had the, this paint down and the color was close enough so I added a little bit more brown and I'm using that to kind of paint inside of his ear holes and his nostrils and in the back of his mouth to give it a, a that little bit of a darker tint. Um, we'll, we'll detail all of that later but right now I just want to kind of fill those in so they kind of uh, have, have this deeper color inside of those areas. So now I'm not really sure what pupil colors the Hunchback actually had. Mine's going to have brown because he's got brown hair. He's a kind of a swarthy person, and so I'm going to give him brown eyes. And uh, to do that, I'm actually filling most of the eye with this eye color, all right? Uh, there will only be little bits of the white showing on each edge of the eye. Um... If, if you look at it, most of it, it's not a circle. You're not going to see a circle of color in the middle of the eye. It's almost the entire eye is this. So again, coming in from the left and from the right, I'm going to paint in the eye, leaving just small amounts of white in each corner. And I'm going to do that on both eyes, except on the big googly bulbous eye, uh, it's going to be a lot bigger. Now, normally, it's really important that you point his eyes during this phase, but you'll notice mine are not, okay? The one eye is pointing straight out. The other one is kind of off to the side. That's done intentionally because it is a big, bulbous monster eye. So, uh, you know, I did that on purpose, but normally, like I said, you'd want to be very cognizant about having the, the uh, eye pointing in the same direction, I didn't need to worry about it here, but, you know, if you're doing just like some Joe Schmo, make sure you're pointing the eyes correctly at this stage.
as to this brown paint that I'm using, it's just a Tamiya brown. Uh, it's also going to be the base color of the hair that I'm going to do. So as long as I've got the paint out, I've got the brush dipped in the paint, I might as well start painting in his head of hair with its base color. Okay, so it's pupil time, and I'm just going to put a black dot in the center of each eye, again paying attention to his his the direction of his gaze, okay? You want the pupils equal. Again, in this case, the, the right eye, it's going to be off, okay? But that's intentional. And all I'm going to do is I, I'm just going to dip my uh, toothpick here in the black paint, and I'm just going to use it to dot the pupil in, and that's all there is to it. So you know how I talked about all the, the many layers of skin colors and how I felt like it was too much? Same thing goes with eyes. I've heard of people putting black down first, then the eye color, then the pupil, and then little dots of white and all this sort of stuff. I really don't see that it makes that much of a difference. Maybe if you're doing a much larger scale model, it does. Uh, but in this small of a scale, none of that is, it, it, it's lost. It's just lost. So why hassle with it? You do it this way, and then you put some clear on it at the end, and you're going to have a fabulous looking eye on your creature. I promise you. Okay, so with his hair blocked in and his chest hair blocked in, I can go ahead and start painting his clothes. And I'm just going to use flat green and a flat kind of a, more like a greenish gray for his outfit. And all I've got to do first is just kind of block it in where it meets his torso because, you know, I, I need that to be really careful. And then once I'm done, I can just go ahead and slather it on. Uh, again, this is flat paint. It's easy to paint. You're going to brush paint all this on. You can you can airbrush it if you want, but that's a lot of masking and a lot of hassle when you really don't need it. You can just brush paint all this on, uh, and it's going to look fantastic after we put a little weathering in it and a little bit of modulation in it. It's going to look great. So uh, the trick here is I'm going to go around, and I'm just going to kind of uh, cut in all the edges as carefully as I need to, and then I'll go ahead and finish painting up his shirt and his pants. So I used some oil brushers to add some uh, a little bit of differentiation into his clothes, uh, little levels of light spots and dark spots. Uh, I used some some buff colored oils over the worn patches in his outfit. I took and mixed up a, a light pink color and just kind of softly brushed that into the whip marks on the hair. I just dry brushed it with a, a tan color and then I hit it up with a little uh, a bit of a wash to kind of darken up some of the gaps. And uh, so, yeah, he's really coming along and looking pretty neat here. So, remember when I talked about um, a little gloss on his eyes, okay? This is where that's going to come into play. I'm just going to use a little Tamiya clear gloss, and I'm just going to kind of flow it in over his eyes, and I'm going to put some in his mouth and on his teeth. Um, depending on what you're looking for in your character, maybe you can put a little uh, semi-gloss clear on the lips. I'm not going to do that because I'm really satisfied with the way the lips are looking. But for sure, the inside of the mouth and the teeth have to have it and the eyeballs.
Now, I mentioned that I'm not going to use the platform that he sits on from the kit. All I did was get the measurements from it, and I designed my own in Illustrator, and I'm cutting it out on my Glowforge. I uh, get all the parts that I need uh, to build the base that he's going to sit on, because my guy is actually going to sit on a solid wood base. To get the parts of the base to be the right thickness, I cut multiple parts and glued them together, and I was just using one, two, three blocks here uh, to kind of keep everything squared up while the glue dries. So I just kind of am using the weight to pin them together and make sure everything's nice and snug. Then we can just leave it dry. I just used a little bit of wood glue. We'll let that dry, and then we'll get to weathering and detailing out the base. The wood that I was using is too pristine, and so I have beat on it with a hammer, I've poked it with a screwdriver, I've scratched it, I've chipped away at the edges with an X-Acto, and now I've got this really, really rough sandpaper. And I'm going to use this in the direction of the wood to kind of cut in a, a grain, if you will. Now, of course, this is real wood, so it's already got a grain pattern in it, but I need it to be deep and aged looking. So I'm going to use this uh, very rough sandpaper and just kind of gouge the tar out of this thing uh, to, to give it a little more life and depth. Well, it's looking so much better, but it still needs more uh, aging. So let's get back to work with the hammer and beat on this a little bit and put some more dents in it and scrape, scrapes and scratches and whatever else just to really make it look like it's a, uh, something that would have been sitting outside in the town square where they can torture all their hunchbacks. So to get this show on the road, I'm just using a little Tamiya black paint in a lot of water. Nice, thin, diluted liquid that I can brush on here to bring some uh, aged tone to this wood. So, uh, like I said, I just uh, mixed paint in with water. I can do a, a brush it on a little bit. And you can see that's a little bit way too light. I mean, I'd be here forever, coat after coat after coat. So uh, I'll, I'll probably come back and darken this up with a little bit more paint. And definitely I'm going to pay attention to variations. I, I'm going to give some planks a heavier coat that I won't wipe away. Other planks are going to get uh, just a quick light wash and most of it will be wiped off. I'm going to blot it on in some spots. And I'm going to really focus on trying to make this uh, have a lot of differentiation between each plank. It's still not there, but you can definitely see it getting better, okay? It's starting to show some age here. And uh, it's just a matter of, of keeping going until you get it the way you like it. So I took a bunch of little tiny screw eyes, I drilled some small holes all the way around the pedestal and put the screw eyes in. Uh, that's where they'll use, uh, uh, that. those will be the anchor points so they can chain their hunchback down. And uh, you see I, I put a lot of staining right underneath where he would be including some, gross as it may sound, some brown and a little bit of yellow to, to simulate where he is been going to the bathroom because I'm sure they weren't taking him into the uh, restroom on a regular basis. He was probably just going. Um, so I'm getting ready to go ahead and attach him to the base, and I realized I got to cut off these little attachment points where he would have glued on to the plastic base. Oh, so I'm just going to nip those away, 
And look at that. That's going to look so amazing there. Now, the center of the, the pedestal is just a piece of dowel I got at Hobby Lobby. I cut it down to length. And then all we have to do is center everything, glue the dowel in, and then glue the top of the pedestal up there. So I'm just going to find the center point, And using some wood glue, I'm going to get all this glued together. I almost made a little bit of a mistake here in that the screw eyes are just pristine silver screw eyes, and that's not going to work. So I'm just hitting them up with a little Tamiya gunmetal uh, to darken them down um, and, you know, make them look more like they belong on this pedestal. Now, my original idea was I was going to use uh, some just some rope-like cord uh, for all the connection points tying him to the pedestal, but I realized that probably isn't the case, especially because he looks like he has manacles on his wrists, which I had painted gunmetal. So I've added in this uh, chain that I bought uh, based on its scale. I felt like it was the right scale. Uh, I'm going to actually kind of paint it a little bit with some of that gunmetal. And um, then we'll use that to attach his wrists to the pedestal. Uh, for around his neck, I am going to use the rope, and I'm going to wrap that around his neck, tie it, and then tie it to one of the anchors as well. So we'll have a little bit of the rope, we'll have a little bit of the chain, and that should really give this some visual interest. So in addition to the screw eyes, you're going to need some jump rings, and then you just put a jump ring through the, the manacle and the chain and squeeze it shut, and chain number one and chain number two are in place. We can go ahead and chain them down. Okay, so the hunchback is just about ready. Uh, the base is all dry. I just need to glue the, the circle part on top. Uh, so again, I just have to find the center point, put a little glue there, uh, just use some wood glue, and then glue the two parts together and let them dry. And once that's dry, we can go ahead and get close to wrapping this thing up by mounting the hunchback to his pedestal.
Now, for assembling the two parts of the hunchback, the torso and the legs, I am using the Starbond CA just because uh, it it's uh, more in the bottle. It comes out faster and easier. It's going to be easier for me to get a good uh, application of this all the way around where the two parts connect. And then I just got to work the two together, let that dry. I'm not going to monkey with the chains and ropes yet. Uh, I just want to let that glue dry really, really well. And then we'll go ahead and fasten him down. So with the CA dry, I can go ahead and get a couple more jump rings and uh, kind of roughly figure out how long I want the chains and then connect them to the uh, eyes that I put into the pedestal. So I'll do both chains with the jump rings and then uh, I'll also put a jump ring on another one uh, where the rope will tie on and then I'll tie that on last uh, to make sure I'm happy with its length. Once that's done, I'll put a little drop of glue on it to make sure the knot doesn't come undone. And once that's dry, then I'll nip away the extra chain and the extra rope. And we pretty much can call this build done.